Hello, I'm David, the Vice President of the University of Brighton Mantell Geological Society, and today I'm going to be doing a run-through of Zedlog 3.0. This is a shareware produced by the Royal Holloway University of London, which is accessible to anyone, downloadable online. The uh, link to it will be on the description in the YouTube video. I've created a generalised fictional cyclothem for this. Um, there's no coal in Brighton for everyone who's ever wondered. I've done this to illustrate the main features of what this program can do. Uh, so yes, let's move on to building it. It's important to note that the that this starts with the lowest bed first, so you always put that one on and then build up your heights. Okay. So the first bed we're going to add is going to be the coal bed. You can either do this through the edit window where you can add the bed or the hotkey oil, there's a nice bar, nice little button on the toolbar here. Um, it's important to note that the thickness is in centimetres, so don't put 1.2 in because it won't work with your scale, 1.2 metres. Um, I will go more into how to get the notes, age and formation onto your log because it's not there by default forgive any spelling mistakes you might see the lithology menu is not you know not everything's where you might think it would be I didn't think coal was in basic I looked in specialist and other first so just check around for what you want it's probably hiding somewhere um, grain size is generalised as opposed to being in phi or millimetres. Um, with the um, structures and fossils and stuff, you can either have it displayed in the grain size section, which is what this symbols in bed thing means, or you can have it in its own column. I'm going to display both for now with the plant material for this one. So that will come up tiled rather than one, because uh, if you turn off tiled, it'll just display one of that symbol. Press add. Go to fossils, and we shall have some more plant fossils for this. There we go. So yeah, that'll give you that in both the columns now. and there we go alright that's the first bed done I'm now going to add the second one which will be a limestone so with this limestone bed you just click on add a bed again now with the erosional it's good to remember that this is the erosional base of the bed so it doesn't mean that the bed itself has been eroded it means this bed has eroded into the one down below it as is evidenced by the coal class in this case. Oops. Um, yep. So this got a good selection of carbonates. Once it brings them up. And it does allow you to pick which different type of limestone that you could define in the field as opposed to the sparites or the micrites, which you need to be back in the lab for really. This one I'll display the lithology in the symbols in uh, in the grain size bit just to show you what that looks like. Um, pick one generally for whatever project you're doing it. Either do it with the symbols, nothing, or the lithology and just stick with that is probably your best bet. Now this one has two different structures in it. It's going to have both gastropods and uh, some interclass, so that's already added that to the thing. Now you've got to press add again, and the gastropods will disappear, but don't worry, it will still turn up in the column. Luckily, again, it's to ignore this until it changes further on up the bed, um, just to save a bit of time and everything. Um, fasces, I'll probably go into in possibly another vid video if anyone wants to know about that. Um, because I'm doing a coal cyclothem, it's basically one fascies anyway. 
so yeah this should show you what this looks like there we go a nice little bed there displaying that it's a grain and it displays them both together okay I'm not going to um, skip ahead a few and do some without recording and just just to save a bit of time until I get to the next important bit on this so yes I'll see you all in a minute so here's the updated uh, log so I've got all this done so far if you want I'm not going to show you how to edit a bed you've already made because I've got the height on this slightly wrong so you just go in here and type in whatever you want to change within it so yeah I've played around a bit with the numbers since I um, showed you the log but uh, the data rather but that's just to help display things better to you you can make it grayed up or down using the um, top and bottom sets so that gives you this nice appearance and yep so we're gonna now add the next bed which is another sandstone member it's not a kilometer no well that's a kilometer and another basics little sandstone you can just uh, jump to wherever you want to go on this by using your keyboard so type in M and it'll jump to the first M it finds at the beginning of a category this one is biotubated so we're going to add some minor biotubation uh, the only real difference in the image between minor, moderate and intense is that there are more of the little squiggly S's. Um, the main difference between this one and the other beds is that there's going to be a different formation. So this is going to be part of the upper Brighton coal measures. We're going to define it by that by giving it a boundary line. Now I'm going to use a dotted line because later on I might want to add on top of it a large amount of chalk which would be a very different formation so for that I'd probably use a um, simple line to help define the difference uh, it's still part of the carboniferous so I'll leave that well alone and um, yes I think that's everything no it's not I'm going to have to edit that and just use lithology keep everything nice and simple. So yeah, as you'll have noticed, this dot line hasn't actually appeared, and that will appear when I play with the preferences later and show you how to make the age formation and notes appear. Okay, so that's that done. Next I'm going to show you is what two different lithologies looks like, as the next bed is a sandy shale. No? Yes, a sandy shale. Try saying that after a few shandies. Sounds <laughs> uh, I'd like the fact that you can choose up to three. I'm going to choose a nice shale. Sandy shales by the seashore. Sandy shales by the seashore. That's a bit better. Um, you can change the percentages, things this is just made up, I'll make it, I don't know, 30% shale and 70% sandstone. Oh, and there was some trough cross bedding. Now, what I've noticed with this is that it uses very scientific versions of some of the, um, well not very, it uses more scientific versions of the um, different sedimentary structures, so planar cross bedding, trough cross bedding, which yeah, I haven't heard it called that many other places but I may just not have been reading the same books so yeah 
just the best way is probably just to look at the images when they come up. That's what I found anyway. You can just delete them, though if you're using more than one, you've got to be careful. More than one um, structure, you have got to be a bit careful. So, seeing as this is handy, let's make it silty at the top and a nice fine sand at the top. Oops, that's the wrong way around. Luckily, there is a lot of play in this. So if you, if I had gone through, I could just go back very easily. It's not like it's locking you in. So yeah, there's that. It gives you the hummockiness, and it gives you the different percentages of what's in each bed, not by height, which is quite nice, because that could lead to a little bit of confusion. But that's a nice little way of doing it, I think. So yeah. Right, I want to insert a bed in the middle of these two. How do I do that, you ask? Well, you go to the lower of the two. Click on that. The Insert Bed button. It's that one there. That'll in, uh, put it between the two. Under the one you've highlighted. So, that's what I want to be pressing, actually. Again, it's in the Edit panel. So I want to introduce another sandy bed because who doesn't like sand? Well, but quite a lot of people don't like sand. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's make it nice and simple. So yeah, there we go. Now you might notice that if you don't specify a boundary it doesn't define one. This can get quite confusing if you do have lots of the same type like I've got here. I've got four sandstones, one with a bit of shale in it. So I would recommend always putting in these base boundaries. Just makes it it's another thing that makes it easier to read, which is probably the main point of using this over one that you've hand drawn because this will generally appear a little bit easier to read generally especially if you've got messy handwriting like me so yeah that's all of that I'm now going to skip ahead a bit and play around with this again and I'll come back to you when I've got the next thing to show you which will probably be right at the end um, playing with the preferences and stuff so yeah I'll be back again in a minute Right, so here we are with the finished log, the whole select with them from top to bottom, coal to coal. There we are, that's all looking nice. I'm just going to show you something that I neglected to earlier. You can see what structures and fossils you have put into each. In so there we've got all three, you can delete the individual layers like that if you accidentally put one in the wrong section. Okay, that's all that done. Right. The final real thing to show you, well, the final thing to show you with editing it, is how to put in all the different columns. Because of course this doesn't have the age, the formation, or the notes or biodivation we put in the actual data sets. So to do that, you go to the preferences, which is that button, or in tools. and you then put in the columns that you want to. You can also rename them if you want to, like if you're going to have for instance periods as well as ages just okay so we want the age, we want the formation, we want the notes and we want the biotubation, we want all of those. Okay now this has got it all out of order, for instance you don't really want the scale after the notes and biodivation because that's a little bit awkward so you drag these down up and down and it'll put it below oh, above <laughs> above whatever you um have highlighted after while dragging it so we want 
age first, then we want formation and then scale. And these want to go right near the bottom. And then oops, go at the very end. So that will give us a nice little setup. Um, you can also change the font sizes here if you're finding the text a bit small after you've exported it, which I'll show you in a minute. You can also change the title of it at the top, so I'll call this one the Brighton Coal Measures. Assuming I can type. There you go. Um, you can also change all sorts of fun things. Also, you can change what grain size charts are shown. For instance, if you don't have any limestones in your log, you can just make it so it's mud, sand and gravel only. Or if you're doing a limestone only body, you can just change it to only limestones. So that's quite useful. We've got both, so I'll leave it as that. Um, you can also change the scale and various sizes. So that's that. So we apply it. Now, there can be a few issues occasionally with overlapping of names. For instance, if I run in here and type carboniferous, it will probably overlap with that one. So there's no real way to get around this. Um, this is just, just to sort of delete it and yeah, infer that it remains carboniferous around there until it gets to wherever you, else you want to put it. Um, nothing really you can really do about that. However, if I can also demonstrate this, you can change the size of the columns. It's important to note this because it can wind up with things overlapping each other if you don't. Cause I think it on the start it winds up with uh, the things being all inwardly to the like here. You've got the formations halfway through the scale bar, which isn't particularly what you want. So you can play around with them. Give the symbols a bit more space in this. If you've got three, I mean, if you've got four, you'll need a lot more space than that. Um, yeah, you've got the notes on it there. And okay, there's your nice little log. All finished. So, how you save it. When you go to save log, it will save it as the proprietary file type, which is .slg. Now this will only be openable by said log as far as I know. It definitely won't be openable by Word or anything, because this is the project file type, if I can call it that, where you can go in and still edit it. Uh, so yeah. Always save that first. Uh, might as well replace it. Now to get it onto Word or whatever else you want to put it in, if you want to put it in your report or your spreadsheet for whatever reason, you go to the export log button. Now this will convert it to whatever file type you want to, but you will not be able to edit it in this file type. So I've called it demo glider. And you save that and then you can import it. I'll demonstrate in a minute after I've shown you one more thing which is very important. Now it's not immediately identifiable what all of these symbols mean and if someone doesn't know then that's a big problem because it makes it very hard to identify what it's actually showing. So this is why you always have a key when you're doing a log. Here it is that button there is the easiest way to get to it and it gives you everything that you have put in it doesn't give you everything that the program has an option to luckily since that list will go on quite a way for the symbols yeah it gives you a rundown of everything you've put in and an explanation of the symbols you can uh, export this as like just like the actual log as a JPEG so save that so you can put it in with your nice little Thing so people can actually understand what you've made. Very important thing. And yes, yeah, so I'll just show you what that looks like when you've installed it in something. I did this earlier after a failed recording. And yeah, I'm 
file insert picture just like you would with um oh edit so picture just like you would with most programs I mean not many people use open office when compared to word so there's that but this will let you import it into whatever program you're using because most anything can use a JPEG so yeah there's your that's how you make a nice little log and the key for that log and that is how you use the basics of said log 3.0 now if you want I can do further videos um, I'm very tempted to do one on how you create your own symbols and import them onto it for something it might not have for instance if rather than general cephalopods you want to define goniotites, serotites and ammonites separately for if you're using them as zonal fossils or something um, maybe an explanation of how to use the fasces or maybe some other small odds and ends in it um, if you want something specifically in the program you can tell me in the comments and that's pretty much everything um, I hope it's been useful um, yeah the website I'll put in the description I do believe it's just sedlog.com um, which was created by Royal Holloway University quite a while ago it's shareware and look up the Mantel Society online it's I do believe it's Mantel sock.co.nr I'll put it in the description along with our Facebook group as well Mantel Geological Society and yes I think that's everything um, yeah I hope this has been useful and I hope you have a good day